We're starting with Richemont, which owns several of the world's leading luxury brands with particular strengths in jewelry, luxury watches and premium accessories. Right, so Cartier is probably their most uh, well-known brand, but they also own Mont Blanc and Von Cleef and Arpels, which is spectacularly expensive, but wonderful looking diamond jewelry, necklaces and that kind of thing. Remember, headquartered in Switzerland, Executive Chairman Johan Rupert, one of South Africa's favorite businessmen, I think you'd have to say, from an investor point of view, people love to follow him in his investing activities. A very, very strong global group. It has had results very recently. We're going to talk about those in a minute. Market cap, 622 billion rand, a PE of 42.5, and a dividend yield here of 1.8%. Mia, let's get you to weigh in. Yes, so Paul mentioned the interesting results. We had some profit issues there, a 35% reduction in profit due to um, non-market um, write-downs, which were due to, um, you know, some derivatives and interesting financial instruments. But if we excluded that, they actually had an increase of about 8% in their profit. They had stronger sales. It wasn't the strongest numbers we have seen. But, I mean, they are still growing in, in, in areas like the East and in, in China even though it's a, it's a slower growth, they are still growing. They saw relatively strong growth from Europe. And it's a case where we think that the rich people will just be getting richer, unfortunately. And, um, and, and there will be a case for, for a company like Richemont. Paul? I don't think it's unfortunate that rich people are getting richer. <laughs> no, I agree, actually. I think it's great news that rich people are getting richer. A couple of standouts for Richmond in the recent trading period. Very poor sales in Hong Kong and Macau. Macau because, I don't know, the casinos fell over or something. In Hong Kong, of course, we had the unsettled environment with street protests. So if you've been to Hong Kong, I know you have, it's like one outdoor mall, that whole city. So that's been a problem. But they did have good solid sales in Europe and the US markets recovered nicely. Japan was fairly flat, but it had a very good year last year. So sales looking okay across the broad, across the portfolio, as Mia says. Production is largely in Switzerland, so that's where the chaps actually make all this stuff, and that's not going to change. They've made it clear that they're very committed. So now you've got a business with costs in Swiss francs. We know that the big volatility in the Swiss franc has caused problems with regard to margins as a result of that. But I think they will attend to that in time, and all of these noisy issues around profits and cash adjustments related in large part to those currency fluctuations. So my own view is you should ignore all of that headline earning adjusting kind of cash balance currency derivative nonsense because it isn't really the core issue with regard to the earnings prospects of the company going forward. Mia? I agree on that. I think it's it's more on the long term and you need to um, you know, look on a constant currency basis sort of and, and, and determine where are the growth coming from and whether you think those growth drivers will be there into future. Um, we know the Swiss franc is actually going to um, affect a whole lot of companies that, that, that do business either in Switzerland or do pro or pro produce in Switzerland. So there are a lot of things that I think will be even out over, over uh, you know, a bit of a medium term when it comes to the currency effect. But overall, I think it's a business with very strong modes and a, um, strong brands and it's difficult to actually you know, beat those brands. One other point I want to make for first time viewers following stocks like this in conversations like this is when a company has earnings that you can't really understand because they're full of adjustments, this and financial instrument write downs, headline earnings different to normal earnings, look at the dividend. Mm. Because the dividend is what the board is telling you regarding how they feel about their business in the future and how they feel about their cash balances. And in this case, they hiked the dividend from 1 euro 40 to 1 euro 60 or something like that, telling you that they want you to look through the noise and under understand that the business is in good shape. Okay. Share price. Yeah, let's get that let's up. Let's look at this. Um, what are we sitting with there? Well, it's at 110 ish, but to be fair, let's bring Mia in here. While I'm waxing lyrical here about what a super company it is, it hasn't really been a super company to invest in for about the last 18 months. It's sort of gone sideways. Yeah, it's been kind of out of favor for this term that you mentioned. Um, over When you look at a longer term, if you are a longer term investor, you'd be very happy with the share in your portfolio. And I think going forward, it probably will be um, you know, a similar sort of story. I think over the last about 18 months, we had the currency issue with the, mm. with the Swiss franc. We had um, numerous other issues about China and how how um, how the government actually works mm -hmm. there. Whether they're going to keep on bribing each other <laughs> to get um, you know to get contracts or whether they're not. And and mm. these were the sort of goods they would. Um, 
they would buy each other when mm. they were looking for nice Bit contracts. Of anti-graft movements. So there are a lot of sort of changes when it comes to the environment that Richmond operates in, but we think it's a it's a strong company nevertheless. Okay, so now the two of us decide, are we going hot or not on this one? 110-ish. I mean, is this the moment now to jump into them? You didn't sound completely convinced, well, I must yeah, say. I agree. I think you, you already have a position in the company yeah. and it, it trades in, in quite a bit of a band. So I think there are more than enough opportunities where you can pick the share up closer to around 100 Rand. Um, I'd be waiting for those opportunities. So that's my verdict, but I'm still very hot on the stock. So hot on the stock, but a bit anxious about entry level. But look, yes. I'm going to go with hot. We, as yes. you say, do have a position in the portfolio so we're going to go hot on Richmond. Let's go hot.